Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. In this video, I'm going to tell you about one of the mistakes that I made when I first used the query editor in Excel and Power BI. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo files from the link in the description below. I'm going to be using the query editor in Excel, but what I'm going to show you is exactly the same in Power BI. According to data modeling and spreadsheet design best practice, fewer columns leads to a more efficient worksheet or data model. Here, I've imported some data from a CSV file into Excel. And for this report, I don't need the customer or the sales rep columns, so I can remove these. And the query editor provides a few methods to remove columns. The first method is to select the column or columns to be removed. So I will click on customer and control and click on sales rep and then click the remove columns button that's on the home tab of the ribbon. An alternative to doing that is to select the column or columns, right click the heading of one of the selected columns and select remove from the menu. Whichever way you do it, a step is created in the steps panel. Now, suppose I change my mind and I do want those columns in my report. I just delete the step. So I can just click the red cross to the left of removed columns. And those columns come back. Now, in that example, I selected both columns and chose remove. But what if I deleted the columns separately? So if I right click on the customer column and select remove and right click on the sales rep column and select remove. Because I've performed the same step twice in succession, albeit on different columns, the query editor tries to be efficient by combining those actions into a single step. Now, let's suppose I decide I want to keep the sales rep column, but not the customer column. I'd have to delete the step, which adds both columns back into the table, and then remove just the customer column. Or I could edit the code that the query editor generates. But I appreciate that many people don't feel comfortable editing code. So I'll remove the column again and show you the code. I'll select the customer column and the sales rep column and then remove those two columns. I need to make sure that the step removed columns is highlighted and then look at the code, which is in the formula bar just above the table. The code, which is written in a language called M, tells the query editor to remove the columns customer and sales rep. So if I want to keep sales rep, I need to remove this bit of the code. Just highlight it, press the delete key and press enter. So the code now is saying remove the customer column, which is exactly what it's done. The sales rep column has come back. So this is how I was removing columns when I started learning about the query editor. As you can see, it's a little bit fiddly if you change your mind. In my opinion, a better option is to use the choose columns button. This has the benefit that the step has a cogwheel, which makes it easy to change the step definition. With choose columns, you don't need to select the columns to be removed first. So I just click choose columns, which is on the home tab of the ribbon and untick customer and sales rep and click OK. And if I change my mind, I'll click on the cogwheel next to that step and then I can tick and untick as I need to and click OK. Also, if we look at the code, it's actually subtly different. With remove columns, the code that's generated defines which columns should be removed. But with choose columns, the code defines which columns should be retained. Now, you might be thinking, so what? You end up with the same result. But let's take a slightly different scenario. 
Every month I'm sent a CSV file and because the CSV file is generated from our sales system, one of the column headings is different each month. But there's a core set of columns that I want to keep. I want to keep product, state and revenue. Now let's say I've imported the CSV file for the first time and I need to go to the query editor and make some changes. If I use remove columns and remove month one customer and sales rep, and that's what I will do now, the generated M code will include month 01. So the next month, because the CSV file doesn't include a column called month one, the refresh will fail. But if I use choose columns and choose to keep product, state and revenue, then the refresh will succeed because the generated M code says select or keep product, state and revenue. It doesn't mention the other columns by name. So as you can see, the difference between remove columns and choose columns is subtle but crucial. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. And if you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. I also have a free weekly newsletter packed with tips to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up to that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.